What is going on you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Logan if you don't know me already and in today's video I'm going to be going over all the prices associated with charging your Tesla at home. First thing I'm actually going to do is plug my car in because I actually had it unplugged just so I can get the thumbnail that's on this video. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this but I actually plugged mine into a 110 outlet. I still don't have a 220 outlet installed to charge my car which is ideal. You want that because you can charge your car a lot faster than just plugging in to a 110 outlet, but I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be living in the house that I'm living in now, so I haven't spent the money to install a 210 outlet. Now, first off, just a disclaimer, I live in Florida, so I'm just gonna be using all the average costs, like the average fuel cost for gasoline, the average like kilowatt per hour um, that's in Florida. That way I can just like round all the numbers up really easy. Wherever you live, it might cost more for electricity and less for gas, or more for gas and less for electricity. Okay, before I start this video, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button if you don't follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Both of the links are at the very top of the description below. Okay, so before I even say anything, I wrote down all these numbers on a piece of paper because like it's way too hard to remember that. So if this sounds scripted, that's because it is. So anyways, instead of just telling you exactly how much it costs to charge the Tesla, I kind of want to compare it to how much it costs if you just had a normal gas car. So before I bought this car, I had a 2012 Range Rover Evoque, and the miles per gallon on that car was 18 miles per gallon in the city. Now, I don't want to add highway miles at all because I don't ever drive highway. Like, I don't ever drive on road trips ever. If I ever go out of town, I fly every single time, and I also drive really hard. So whatever the city where it says like highway versus city i'm 100 i always get whatever it says city i never get anything more than that because i drive like i'm crazy so anyways with the range rover the car i had before this one i got 18 miles per gallon it took premium gas so the gas was two dollars and eighty cents per gallon so with the range rover and the tesla the gas and electric i just want to add both of them up to fifteen thousand miles per year because i leased the tesla and when i leased it i got a fifteen thousand mile per year option so I can drive 15,000 miles per year, at least for three years, and I get a total of 45,000 miles. Is that right? Yeah, 45,000 miles. So let's say with the Range Rover, it is 18 miles per gallon, and gas is $2.80 per gallon, and I drove with the full 1,500 or 15,000 miles over a year, the absolute total would be $2,333.33. So that's like almost $2,500 in gas just for driving the gas car. Nonetheless, how much it costs for oil changes, which were like close to $200 in a Range Rover where I live. Um, plus like changing stuff in the transmission. I don't really know what else to do with cars. I'm not a car guy. So whatever that costs, you got to think there's so much maintenance involved with the gas car too. Um, the total gallons of gas used in 15,000 miles in a full year is 833 gallons of gas, which is crazy. And all the pollution that you're putting out by driving gas. I'm not trying to be all like green on you guys or whatever. But yeah, that's just a lot of gas and a lot of money spent on gas for a gas car. Okay, now for the Tesla. Now, again, I'm going to be looking at this paper like the whole time because you can't break down like the miles per gallon because it's electric. So you have to break down the like kilowatts per hour. So for electric cars, you get the gas equivalent. So like say like a normal car is 25 uh, miles per gallon. You can get the like electricity equivalent of that. So like... For example, the Range Rover was 18 miles per gallon, where the Tesla, the gas equivalent version of the electricity, does that make sense? Like how much, how many miles per gallon it would get if it was gas, as far as like prices go, and it's 146 miles per gallon, is what this car, like if it was like gas, that's how much it would get, which is like crazy. 18 versus 146, but in the example I used for the Range Rover, I took the average gas price of um, premium gas in Florida, which is $2.80 right now as I'm filming this. That's gonna go up or down depending on where you're watching this. And so for the kilowatt hours, I'm just going to use the national average in Florida, which is 11.37. So I'm trying to make this as simple as possible and not confuse you guys, but the equivalent is 146 miles per gallon, which is rated at 3.7 kilowatts per hour. So I'm gonna use a calculator and add the average miles that I'm driving, which is 15,000. Then I'm just gonna divide that by 3.7 kilowatts per hour, which adds up to over 4,000 miles of electricity being used, basically. So now we just multiply the price of the kilowatt hours, which is 11.37, so 0. 0.1137, which then adds up to $460. So basically what all that means is, is all you do is charge your Tesla at home using like the electricity at your house, whether you have a 110 outlet or a 220 or whatever, you're gonna pay $460 a year for like the whole electricity for the car if you drive it to 15,000 miles. 
Compare that to a gas car, which like I said, is like almost $2,500. So let's just say, let's do, so just compare to the Range Rover is $2,333 minus, what did I say, 260? Minus 260, 460, not 260. So you're gonna be saving $1,873 just by going electric. Besides the fact that gas is that much cheaper, you also have to take into account, I spent like almost two, about $200 every, I don't know, about six months to change my oil. That's the oil and the filter because Range Rovers are just like, everything with that is so expensive. Plus, my Range Rover didn't have the regenerative braking or regenerative braking, however you say it. So you had to replace your brakes every, I don't know, three to four years or something. I have no idea how much that is because I've never even had a car that long. I've never even replaced the brakes on any car that I've ever had. But anyways, there's, my point is there's all these maintenance costs associated with owning a gas car. And once you go electric, not electric, once you go with the Tesla, at least so many of those are knocked out. Like you should be able to own a Tesla for five years. And the only thing you should ever replace is the tires. There is no transmission. There's no timing belt. There's no, obviously there's brakes, but with the regenerative braking, you hardly ever use your brakes. Your brakes should last you like 10 years. But to break Break it down really fast. If you only charge your Tesla at home, you're not using a supercharger, you're not using all the free chargers that are available, you're gonna pay about $460 a year in Florida. And then for a gas car, it's gonna be about $2,400. So that's like an $1,800 difference between the two. Like I said, that's not completely necessary. You know what, how much is that per month that you're saving? It's 1,873, divide that by 12. That's $156 you're saving per month in gas. That's crazy. I actually spent more than this, so like I spent $160 a month in gas um, before I bought this car so that was another huge reason why I'm like all right it's time to get this because I'm driving so much and wasting so much gas that it actually saved me $160 per month by going electric. Now as far as how I charge my car I still use a 110 outlet just because I'm, I'm not sure when I'm gonna move next and I don't want to pay to get a 220 outlet installed, which is about like around 200 to $250 to get that installed. Now, the reason I'll put in a 220 outlet is because with the 220, I can get a full charge in about five to six hours. And with just charging out of a 110 outlet, it takes me about 24 hours to get a full charge. So I pretty much plug it in like every single night right now, but obviously I can just buy a 220 outlet and then just plug it in once every couple days. Um, it would be a lot more convenient, but I just don't want to pay that much money knowing that I might move soon. Now, supercharging, I'm not even going to get into that with this video, but supercharging is not that expensive either. You can get a full charge with a supercharger in about like 30 to 40 minutes, depending on what size battery you have. So for right now, I'm just sticking with the 110 outlet. Also, so there's this condo right by my gym and they have complimentary Tesla charging stations. So they're not superchargers, but they're just like the, like the wall charger that charges your car in about like five to six hours so what i'll do is it's completely free i'll just park my car there plug it in jog to the gym work out for like an hour or two and then go back and unplug my car and sometimes i'll like help the owner out and work at the gym for a little while so point is i just get free charging most of the time anyways because i definitely take advantage of the free charging at that condo uh, that's another reason why it's not really that important for me to get a 210 outlet right now if you're thinking about buying the tesla one of the biggest things i would recommend is you have to have a place that you can charge it at your home even if it's just a 110 outlet like I'm using now, if you can't charge it at home, it will become a pain in the ass really fast to have to go to supercharger all the time or use like a free charger or whatever the case is. I would just say if you're going to get a Tesla, make sure that you can somehow charge it at the house. Hopefully this video was informative, inform English, how do I talk? Helpful. Hopefully this video is helpful and somewhat entertaining. I know I, I, I hate watching videos when someone's like, it is one kilowatt per hour and like, but I can't remember half of what I'm talking about because this stuff is so confusing to me. So if I'm super boring and monotone, you can blame it on that. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. If you have any suggestions of any videos you want to see next, be sure to leave it in the comments below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.